Hi guys, Pineapple Animation here, and welcome to my tutorial of Flip -a Clip. In this video, I will be teaching you guys how to properly use Flip -a Clip for animation. Now, I know that other people have created videos on Flip -a Clip, but I think it will be good that I do one, because I personally love using this software for animation, and I think it's a good one for beginners and people that just like to animate for free. If you don't really want to use big programs like Adobe that you have to pay for, Flip -a Clip is a good alternative. When you first download the app, you open into this little area right here. Now in this area you have all the projects that you've created or started to work on and then you have your movies. The difference between the movies and the projects is that the projects are the unfinished animation and the movies are when you're finished it and you're ready to upload it to YouTube or their social medias. Okay to begin we click on this little red button right here. So as you can see right here you can change the name of your animation. I'm just going to name this one test because it's a test animation to show you guys. And then you can also change your background. As you can see, there's lots of good backgrounds to choose from here, but the only problem about choosing like scene backgrounds is that's the background for the whole animation. And I don't really like using them, especially since I like to change my backgrounds frequently. And if I just have the same one, I feel like it doesn't make a good animation. Then we also have paper backgrounds, which is just like normal backgrounds, but with a little bit of texture and designed to look like a piece of paper. Then we have some patterns down here, which is pretty good to use. And then last but not least, we have other, which is wood. But anyway, what I like to do is click on this paint button and go right here and like select my background into white. Now I like a white background just because like I feel like if there's nothing in the background, it's easier to create a nice background on top. So that's what it, I like it for. And then you can edit your canvas size. I usually keep it on the YouTube canvas size because my usual uploading of my animation is of course on YouTube. But if you want to make like an animation for your TikTok account or for your Facebook account or for your Tumblr account, then you have more presets right there. But for this tutorial, we're just going to keep it on YouTube. Now this is one of the most important parts. This is your FPS or frames per second. Now the thing to remember when you're doing your frames per second is this is basically how many little drawings you'll have in one second. So if you have one frame per second, that means every second you have one drawing. As you can see, this animation looks like really sloppy and it just doesn't look good. Then the more you go up, it starts to look better. And then last but not least, when you go to the very top, it's like a really fluid, nice animation. But if you think about it, 30 frames per second is a lot of frames in total. Like think about if you had like 100 frames, then you'd have 3000 frames. That's a lot, especially since like that would only be for a couple seconds. The most I've ever used is 24 because I feel like it's really fast, but it's not fast to the point that it's unbearable. But what I usually like to use is 12. That's my favorite one to use. It's good for like story time animations or just nice animations that you don't want to like take too much time on. Okay. Then we press this little check mark button and we press create project. Okay, when you create your project, you open into this little layout with tons of tools. I'm gonna explain what each one does. So when we go up in this right corner, you have these tools right here. So the first one right here is the ruler. So this is good if you wanna get it like a perfect straight line. You just extend it out to go across your whole frame and then you just draw a line. See, perfectly straight, but if you want to like make the straight line go up or like diagonal, you can do it like that. You also in your rulers, you have like other tools like a circle tool you have, and you also have a square tool, which those are pretty helpful, especially if you want to do like, I don't know, like Minecraft animation and you want a perfect square, then you have your square tool. Up here, you have your copy button. So let's say you draw your square, then to copy something, you go to this little lasso right here and you just circle it and you press that copy button. Now, what you can do right here is you can delete it and then paste it. So if you want that square in another frame or something like that, you have your copy button to do it. Or if you just want to duplicate something, then you have your paste button, which of course you use to paste it. Then you have your undo button if you want to like make something go back and you're like, oh shoot, I accidentally deleted my beautiful drawing. Then you can just press your undo button. Then you have your redo button, which will help redo what you just undid. Then you also have your maximize button. This helps you zoom in so you can see what like the whole frame looks like. And up here you have your three little dots. Now these three little dots are extra stuff that they don't want to fit in on the bar. So you have stuff like project settings where you can edit the settings that you did in the beginning. You have frames viewer where you can look at all the frames you've made in your animation and add them. And you can add them like wherever you want before, after, between all 
or you can just cancel out if you don't want to do that. And then you also have your onion skins. This is so you can see what you did in the layer before so you can make fluid animation and you can know what happens before and after. When you press on edit, you can show how many frames you want it before. If you want your onion skins to show the drawings from like three layers before, you can adjust it to three. As you can see, you can see more. You can also change the color of your onion skins if you want it to stand out more. You can loop them and you can edit it so you can show the frames after. Now me personally, I don't like to show the frames after. I only like to show one frame before, but you guys could do whatever you want with it. Then you have your grid, which it helps you create even things. If you want to use grid to create it, this helps make it look good. And you can adjust the size in here. Now here's the deal. There's a flip -a clip pro and there's a flip -a clip normal. Right now I'm using flip -a clip pro where I can change how the grid looks, but I don't think in normal you can do it, but it's okay. I never use the grid anyway. So it doesn't really matter to me. Right here, you can add an image from your camera, your photo library, or from your files. And right here, you can add a video. This is the button you press when you're like, oh my gosh, my animation is solid. I'm gonna post it on YouTube. Then you press the make video button and it'll make your video. Now over here, we have our tools that will actually help us with the animation and drawing. So this is our pen tool. As you can see, you can edit it right here and you can use like a pencil. That's good for sketching. You can use a paintbrush, that's good for like if you want a painting background. Then you have a, the normal pen setting, which I like to use when I draw my characters. And you have a highlighter one. And this is actually kind of good for like shading, if you want to use that instead. But I have a better way for shading that I'm about to teach you. Then right here, you have your size of it. Right now it's at 6 pixels. So if you want to make it larger, you just hold down and you move your finger up to make it bigger. And if you want it smaller, you move it down. Then here's your colors of the pens you want. Now this is good if you want to change the color and make it look nice. You have some presets up here too. If you don't want to find like the same color every time, you can save them. Now let's say you want to get an original color, but you're like, oh shoot, I forgot to save it to my presets and I won't be able to find it. Now, no need to fear. Let's say your color is a nice green, bright neon green. So you color it, but you're like, oh no, I just lost it. Now I'm on like a random yellow. Now there's a really cool tool on here called the eyedropper tool. What you do is you click on the tool, then you go and hover over the color. And as you can see, now you have that color again and you can use it. This is really helpful if you wanna get the same color of like skin tones or eye color in your animations and you don't wanna go searching for it every time. So that's a really helpful tool. Then down here, you can change the opacity of your coloring tool. Now this is what I mean by like a better way for shading because as you can see it's like a lighter tone and it's see-through. So it's good for like shades if you want to make it look nice. Okay, next tool we have is the eraser tool. Now this is the tool that you use if you make a mistake in your drawing and you're like oh shoot I don't want to undo it I just want to erase a little bit of it. So you just go up here and you just erase a little bit of it. Then you have your lasso tool. Now as I explained before this is so you can go over areas and copy them or delete them. You can also, by pressing these buttons, you can flip them to make them like go the other direction. Now let me show an example of this. So we're just gonna call, this is our little doodle guy, and we're just gonna go here, and we're gonna flip them. So as you can see, he changed directions. This is to flip them upside down. Pretty cool. Okay, now let's delete that. This is our paint bucket tool. Now let's say you've just drawn a character, but you don't wanna color in every little space of him. Problem solved. All you need is your paint bucket tool. Now let's use this example again. We're gonna just draw this little character. It doesn't have to look that good, it's just a little doodle sketch. Okay, that's our little guy. And we're like, oh my gosh, I don't wanna color that in. That's gonna take forever. Which you can adjust the brush sizes and it won't take as forever. But my personal favorite way to do it is to use the paint bucket tool. Now let's say we wanna make his shirt a baby blue. Then we click on the tool and we just click on the person. As you can see, it filled in all the space of his shirt. Then you can also use it, you want him to have like a peach skin, then you do that, and there you go. You don't have to color it all in. Then last but not least, we have this tool. This is our text tool. This is a good tool if you don't want to write out words, because then you can just click on the text tool, and then you can type in whatever you want, like hi, and then it makes your own text of it. You can adjust the size of the text by going right here and just pressing down and then expanding. So there's our hi. Now you're probably like, what the heck? I hate this font, it's so ugly. Then you can go under here and you have like a bunch of different fonts. As you can see, when I click on them, it changes the font. So you have like a spooky font, like a Star Wars font, a 
boombox font, whatever that is. And then if you just want a normal one, you can just click on one of these. And there you go, you have your text. And then if you don't want to use the pinching tool and you just want to adjust your size just normally, you can just click down on this and scroll down to make it go smaller and scroll up to make it go larger, just like what we did with our brush tools. And right here, you can change the color. So if you want to make it a different color instead of black, you got like blue, red, green, all that jazz. Now let's say you accidentally click out and you're like, oh shoot, I can't change the size. I didn't want that. Problem solved. You can just go onto your lasso, circle it, and then make the size bigger. Cool. Okay. Now, the tool that we have right here is our audio tool. Now this audio tool is really useful because what if you want some nice audio in your animation to do a lip sync or if you want to do like an animated music video or if you just want to do like a story time animation. Then you have your audio right here. So to add audio, you click on this button right here and you can import audio right here from iTunes or file. I think it's different for Android because Android doesn't have iTunes, but I don't know how to do that. This is more of like an Apple tutorial for it. Then right here, you can purchase their own audio in their audio libraries. Now me personally, I don't really purchase any of this because I could just access these sounds from YouTube or something. So I don't usually purchase, but it's pretty good if you don't want to like go through all the trouble of getting it from online. Then right here, you can record your own audio. So let's say I want to say, hello, welcome to my animation. Then you have it recorded. You can listen to it play over like this. Hello, welcome to my animation. Sounds pretty good. Let's just say you don't want all this space in the beginning. You can just hold down this bar right here and drag it over. So now it's like, hello, welcome to my animation. It's shorter and you don't have to worry about the stuff in the beginning. Then you press this check mark and then you have this little hovering tool where it says click this clip to any track. Here, let me explain that. So let's just say I want to put it on the top and then just play it. Hello, welcome to my animation. Then it's in that specific part. If you want to move the audio, then you can just click it and drag it over wherever you want. If you want to split it because you're like, man, this is too long, or you want to add an audio between it, you just click it down twice and then split. And then if you want to copy the same audio, you press this copy tool, then you have two at the same time. Hello. Sounds like a robot. Hello. And then right here, you have the delete tool if you don't want that audio anymore, so you just click that. And then you have this audio name tool, so you can name the audio whatever you want so you don't get it mixed up with other audio. Okay, now you see how there's like light lines right here, and they kind of look like bars? Because they are bars. They're audio bars. If you want to put in more audio over it to make it sound like more people are talking, or if you want to put background music, you just drag it down and put it on different bar. And then it just goes like that. Now, these tools over here is if you want to mute your audio, you click on the sound button, that mutes it. And if you want to lock the audio so it doesn't get messed up accidentally, it just locks it and you're not allowed to use it anymore. And as you can see, they have this for all the bars. So you can do it to every audio you have. And if you just want to mute it entirely, you can just press that and as you can see, it won't play it at all. And then you have an undo button right here just in case you don't want to have it. Okay, so that's the audio. Now, let's just get into the animation. I'm gonna do a little time lapse of me animating this lip sync. I just wanna show you guys one last tool. This is the layer tool. Now on here, let's say you wanna have a background in your animation and you wanna have a front part of your animation and you wanna have lip sync, but you're like, what if I wanna move it? What if I wanna move the front part, but then it messes up my background? Problem solved, you have layers. So when you click here, you have another layer so you can have something on top of the animation. Okay, now I think in Flip a Clip, the free version, you can only have a maximum up to three layers. But if you purchase the premium like I did, you have 10 layers in total. As you can see, you can have 10 layers at once. See, that's the maximum, but it's okay. I used to animate with three layers. It's not that bad. Okay, now, now that I've taught you everything, Let's animate. Okay, as you can see, this little guy's animation is done. So let me just play it over for you guys so you can see how it went. 
Hello, welcome to my animation. Hello, welcome to my animation. As you can see, it loops. So one more tool I forgot to mention, which is super big, is the copy tool of the frame. So when you hold down this frame, you can see there's a couple tools right here. Now this trash bin right here is to delete the frame. This two pieces of paper is to copy it. This button right here is to add one. So when you press it, it adds a frame in front of it. And last but not least, you have your paste frame. Now this is to paste a frame if you want to paste the frame that you copied. Okay, that is the official Flip a Clip tutorial by Pineapple Animation. I hope this video was helpful to you guys and I hope you enjoyed watching it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.